Yeah. And well, speaking of that, also, um, so this Chevron case happened. Talk about the end That's of right. something. <laughs> That's right. So I gotta tell you, when I first read about the Chevron case, uh I I didn't make the link to crypto. Um I thought it was weird. Um, but it's definitely it's definitely more I understand now. It took me a while, but I understand now why what the impetus behind it is. You know, I didn't understand. It was basically Congress kind of like making high level things and saying, hey, you guys in the in the bureaucracies, you you work it out. You we're authorizing you to work it out. And that's that was a court case. That's the Chevron court case, how that how where the authority actually comes from. So it gave a ton of power to the to the various administrations, the that, institutions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, an that, that make things could happen. decide yeah. a rule yeah. if it's. If it kind of looks like it is uh, attached to the law, right? And yeah. and now it was definitely decided yeah. that no, it's what's right. written in the law, and that's it. And if they want to pass anything, they will have to go through Congress. And no, I so get that the outrage because the impact it, the is idea huge. Is that, yeah, it is. But I get the outrage. I understand the outrage. I don't say I I side with it, but. The idea here is that, you know, the, the politicians voting on on stuff aren't experts in any of the stuff. And the idea is that, uh, you know, before this Chevron case, the idea is that the people at the EPA, the people at the SEC, the people at the ATF, they know what they're talking about. Right. Yeah. They, they're focused on these things. And they're the ones, therefore, who should be kind of reg, uh, uh, delegating and regulating the famous experts. What, what's what. <laughs> right. The famous experts, right? And then, and then what happens is you create these little power structures, the exact thing that right. we don't want anywhere, right. and that's exactly what they what they put an end to. And this is what we're seeing in crypto. So now, because you know, you we've all seen that video of asking, you know, Gary, you know, is Ethereum, you know, a, a commodity, and he wouldn't answer it, right? And that's right. those are the people who have all the power. This should, or you know, goes towards ending that we'll see again like, i think worse than that laws, you know so yeah. i think that um agencies like the sec or the atf or whoever were writing articles like they were the mm -hmm. supreme court right they were like hey yeah. we understand that this law says that and this is the framework and it has been like that for a long time and now now this is over yeah. so it is yeah. um it is very interesting. I think it's a great it's a great thing. I understand what you say, right? Where mm -hmm. um obviously the the legislators they're not experts, but I think this is also um like a topic of democracy, right? Democracy is yeah. a lot harder or the rep republic exercise is a lot mm -hmm. harder than if you have a dictatorship or a centralized yeah authority who can just uh, yeah. take decisions and organize very easily and so that's um that's what we see it's funny because you you have a parallel with um with crypto right the more mm -hmm. convenience you get the less sovereignty you have and it is the same with the government right and so mm -hmm. this ruling forces the experts to now go and explain to the legislators so that they can actually write very precise laws that have the full context of it and of course it means that it would have to evolve more often uh, it would have to go more in depth but I, I guess it's also the price to pay if you want a quantity a quantity law right well that, so. that's a theory i i doubt that's going to happen either I, I don't think i don't think any part of the process is or just be don't regulate or and that's yeah, good. Don't, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, so the the holes that will now exist are holes that we can we can use. We, I mean, people can use uh, to actually, you know, take opportunities and, and do better uh, inside the economy. Like, that's you know, right. I, I definitely when I, was, when I first saw it, I was like, Ugh. but now I'm I'm uh, yeah, I'm all definitely all for it. Um, not all for it. I, there's going to be change. Uh, I don't want to go back. But I just don't have faith that like this is solving some huge problem and everything's going to get better. They're just going to write more omnibus bills um, and try to cover swaths of the economy, of the regulatory part of the economy with bigger words. It's, it's kind of like how you write a patent. Like you try to be as broad as possible and that's what they're going to do. And it's going to make it really hard to read anything to know. I think it's still going to be hard to know what's legal and what isn't. But I guess we'll see. 
and and I have to share that reaction from that guy yeah. Seberg. I don't know where he's coming from, but I saw that in yeah. an article, and the guy was yeah. basically complaining that um, this whole thing is the way they get bipartisan um, compromise on law. They basically mm -hmm. write the law as ambiguous as possible, and then right. um, the then the institutions will be able to have like everything like they would be able to interpret the the law at will and so it right. makes them like it gives them a lot of freedom and so when i read that i was like oh you complain about that i think it's much better it's uh, i understand how it can be more practical but i think yeah. ambiguous law is the most dangerous law That's right the worst. That exactly yeah, totally. yeah. It's all, and, I, and I'm with you about just don't have the regulations, just leave the holes open. And if people right. are harmed inside those holes, then there's liability. And if there's not somebody harmed, then it's not actually a problem. Yeah.